On this video, we're going to be looking at capacity utilisation. To put it another way, a business has got resources. To what extent are they actually using those resources? You'll see a lovely little picture there of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, because just like we got Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you don't want too much, you don't want too little, you want it just right. So first of all, we need to look at capacity. Simply, capacity is the maximum that you can possibly achieve. For example, if you have got a pint pot in a pub, the maximum you can put in that pint pot is a pint. Increasing capacity is normally expensive. It means getting bigger premises, bringing in more machinery, running a, um, a, a night shift, that sort of thing. Similarly, decreasing it can cause problems because it's going to mean reducing your resources, getting rid of workers, uh, moving to a smaller premises. Um, your broad aim with capacity is to try to make sure that your capacity matches your demand. So if that's capacity, what is capacity utilisation? Well, it's the extent to which your capacity is currently being met. So if, for example, your pint pot is half filled, then your capacity utilisation is 50%. If uh, you're watching a football match and a third of the seats are unfilled, then you've got a capacity utilisation of about 66, 67%. Obviously, big implications during COVID because because uh, theatres and, um, and football matches aren't allowed to have all of their seats filled. The formula, ever so straightforward, is your current output, what you are producing now, divided by your capacity multiplied by 100%. Example down the bottom there, if you're a hotel, you've got 320 rooms, 240 of them are occupied, that means a quarter of them aren't, so your capacity utilisation is 75%. If we apply this, the term for capacity utilisation they use in the airline industry is the load factor. So in other words, it's the percentage of seats on an aircraft that are actually filled. And if you look at some of those figures, they are incredibly high. Ryanair over 95%, EasyJet over 93%. British Airways, about one in six seats is unfilled. Not that much of a problem for British Airways because they are much more expensive than Ryanair or EasyJet, so their profit margins are that much higher. But you will spot Monarch uh, running with 82.3% shut down. Thomas Cook also was relatively low before it shut down. If you look at the impact of COVID on capacity utilisation for one leading airline, Ryanair, You'll see that normally they have a load factor of 95.5%. Well, in 2020, in September, they were running 53% uh, of their normal flights. In other words, half of their craft that they would have used last year, they are not using. And those that are being used have got a 71% load factor. So they're 30% empty as opposed to 4.5% empty. Now, the implications of that in terms of their profits, this was taken from uh, a headline on the 2nd of November 2020. Last year, they made a £1 billion profit. This year, as a result of that, they have made a £180 million loss and they are predicting that moving into the long term. So they're currently looking at ways of downsizing to deal with that. So if we look at the mummy bear scenario where your utilisation is too low. That means you've got assets that are sitting there doing nothing. Uh, it means that your unit costs are going to be high, particularly if you're a capital intensive firm. So a couple of examples down the bottom there of underutilisation. On the left hand side, you see performance by Eddie Izzard, one of the Britain's um, top comedians during COVID, where he's performing on the top uh, of a theatre, on the roof of a theatre, you can see the social distancing means that there's lots of space that is not being used. On the right hand side, you've got a common complaint where drivers drive past miles and miles and miles of roadworks, except they can't actually see anybody working on those roads. So how can a firm deal with a situation of underutilisation? Well, one thing they could try to do is to increase demand so that demand rises to capacity. 
obvious ways of doing that, reducing your price or increasing your marketing. Or alternatively, they can downsize. That means selling off your unused assets or rationalizing the workforce. If ever you're employed and you hear that your company is rationalizing, that should be where you should be looking for a new job because it means sacking some workers. Or they could try to lease off some of that spare capacity to another firm. So what about the daddy bear scenario where you've got too high capacity utilisation? Well, broadly speaking, the higher your capacity utilisation, the lower your scope if there's a change in the market, particularly if there's a further increase in demand. How can you cope with that if you haven't got spare resources? One of the terms that you use with capacity utilisation that's high is the sweating of your assets. And it may be that your assets are sweating too much you're spending so many of your resources trying to chase up current demand that you uh, perhaps lose sight of the future you might find there's quality implications because you're concerned with quantity you might be over pushing your labor force because people can break down you might be reducing the time that you're using for machine maintenance again that might have safety implications in the long term and your management and admin resources might be focused on dealing with the here and now rather Rather than the future so too high utilization is uh, not always a good thing so how do you deal with over utilization well one thing you can do is you can try to reduce demand so that it's in line with what you can produce for example raising price or decreasing your marketing expenditure you could possibly try to outsource that extra demand to another firm that will obviously bring in implications of quality control because you are no longer producing the goods yourself or you could try to increase the scale of your operation frequently that's expensive um, think in the football industry about uh, firms that have done that in the last few years Manchester City Arsenal Tottenham West Ham and um, think about the uh, the cost implications of that very very expensive to build a new stadium which is something that often implies or at a smaller scale building a new stand so what are your, this will depend upon factors that's really useful for moving up levels. Well, firstly, what are your objectives? What are you trying to achieve? Secondly, of course, do you see it as a short term or a long term problem with COVID, particularly when the government were giving firms help? Lots of firms were reluctant to sack their workers because they thought it was going to be over relatively quickly. So they didn't want to get rid of that vital resource uh, because they felt they might use uh, those resources again later. Um, and thirdly, of course, how easy is it to do the options that you're faced with? Um, if you're thinking about outsourcing, who might you outsource to? Have you got a firm that, that you've got in mind, a reliable firm that you could use? Um, and of course, that would also affect what your other targets are. And that's pretty much it on capacity utilisation.